Welcome everyone. I'm Julia Martin from the Australian Research Data Commons. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar where Dr. Adrian Burton will present an overview of the Cross ANCRIS National Data Assets Program. This webinar aims to provide information for interested parties plus an opportunity to ask questions. Just a bit of housekeeping during the webinar you will be muted and also please note that the webinar is being recorded. As mentioned, there will be time for questions, so please add your questions into the pod as they arise. I'll now hand over to Dr. Burton. Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, background briefing on the uh, Cross Increase National Data Asset Program. We, I'll probably uh, go through a few slides of uh, background. Uh, some of you will have heard this at the NCRIS meeting, but not everyone was, so I will just give that background for about 10-15 minutes uh, and then we go to questions and discussion, so a pretty standard um, format. If you, whilst you think of questions, just put them, note them down into the uh, questions pod, that way, that way we've got a, an orderly way of uh, working through them when we get to that part. Welcome to my uh, living room as well. I'm not sure you can see my collection of uh, Indian folklore masks and stuff like that, but it's just part of our new uh, working from home uh, environment. So if we go on to the uh, program itself, um, just to give you a really overview of what we're talking about here, this program, the Cross Increase program, is part of a larger National Data Assets Initiative that we'll talk about today. Um, the idea of this program is to bring together data from clusters of NCRIS facilities for particular impactful purposes. Uh, the spirit of this program is not so much for you to compete against each other to get the best idea and, you know, uh, et cetera. It's really for us together to facilitate uh, a really good outcome between the NCRIS facilities, so the spirit of this is not really a competitive call. Uh, we do have a process that does have expression of interest. Uh, that's just to make sure that it's very transparent that anyone who did want to be involved in the facilitation phase um, had a chance to do that on, on an equal footing. So we'll start off in a very sort of normal expression of interest thing, but the next phase will be uh, very inclusive and a lot of facilitation in the spirit of, you know, we're all part of the One Increase program and this is meant to, the actual objective of this whole program is to, you know, get uh, cross increase uh, data facilities. Um, so that's a pretty much an overview of what the, the program's about. I'll just go into some of the details around some of those things um, for a little bit. So I said that uh, this cross ANCRIS uh, program is part of a much larger initiative called the National Data Assets. There are six programs and this is just one of them. Uh, we've divided it into programs because we have uh, a lot of stakeholder groups and we wanted to be able to focus in some of the eligibility and criteria to make sure that we focused in on some of our key stakeholders or specific you know, strategic imperatives that we had. The fact that we have an increase program is just reflects the priority that ARDC puts on the relationship with the other increase facilities. We want to reserve a, a program that really focused in on the particular needs of the increase program and to make sure that no matter what happened in all the other parts of this national data assets, initiative that you know we did have a focused uh, sort of allocation of resource for us to work with the NCRIS facilities and it's allowed us to really focus change the criteria to focus in on a specific opportunity that that exists uh, between the facilities but other than there will be other calls and you're certainly welcome to be part of the other parts of the national data assets program it's not exclusive We've just reserved this particular one for the increased facilities. Um, it, the national data assets, again, the background initiative uh, that the Cross Increase program is part of uh, reflects the spirit of the Increase uh, 
roadmap. Um, and what we're saying here is that national data assets are part of the NCRIS uh, spirit in that they are, data, uh, they are nationally significant data assets that are built up to support leading edge research. So the spirit of this program is meant to reflect again, uh, the spirit of the um, NCRIS review and the, the, the directions for NCRIS since uh, the beginning actually. All right, so that means that this program is, is really focusing in on, on the fact that data itself can be national research infrastructure. And uh, we spoke about this at the forum that, that this is part of the, the, the evolving spirit of NCRIS is that it's not just your um, sensor or your instrument or your, you know, your concrete facility that is uh, part of the infrastructure, but the data that's being produced by these facilities is itself becoming a national asset because uh, well managed and with the right um, elements, you know, uh, people can, it, it can support leading edge research into the future for a very, very long time. Um, the elements that we're looking for when we are talking about a program to build data as national research infrastructure is that the data doesn't matter where it's coming from, it could come from research or government or business or anywhere, it's the data that's for research. Uh, it has to have a national scope because that's part of the increased spirit and as far as data is concerned that means it's not just data that's from a particular project or from a, a particular institution, but it's data that's contributed by people from organisations all over Australia that's consumed. Uh, again, the, the users of the data uh, come from multiple organisations and that it's being governed by multiple organisations. So that's a kind of rule of thumb to make sure that, again, in the spirit of the NCRIS program, that uh, the data assets that we're talking about um, have that national flavour. Of course, they need to be applied to research and we will put a lot of focus on that in this program. Uh, and uh, not only research, but the broader uh, impacts of research as well. And of course, it can't be just a, a spreadsheet that sits on the desktop somewhere. It has to be uh, the data set itself has to have the, the, um, the elements and the properties of uh, infrastructure. I did re remark at the uh, NCRIS forum that, well, that's not news for anyone in NCRIS. You know, you're, you're all developing your own um, uh, national uh, data collections that, that are reflective of your facilities or even you're going further and pulling data from all sorts of other players. So this is something that you're already doing. It's increasingly business as usual that data is part of the, the national research infrastructure of all of your facilities. And we remarked at that stage that ARDC is here uh, in very system, systematic and systemic ways to support you on that journey uh, to being you know, where your data is a major part of your own facility. Now, some of the, the facilities are at different stages in that journey and we have data services, compute and infrastructure, expert consultancy support, skills, all sorts of things that we've been doing for a long time. And that continues uh, regardless of this particular program. That's just us helping you to build up your own facilities. Why, uh, so now the, the rationale for us having a special uh, partnership program with the NCRIS facilities is to move on to where, where are the assets that are, that, that cut across several uh, NCRIS facilities. And that is uh, a degree of difficulty, uh, harder than just you know, managing your own assets. Um, it requires long-term coordination and collaboration between the, the facilities. Um, and so therefore that, that's the rationale behind, behind the, having these projects. It's to uh, pull together stuff that would be you know, beyond the normal uh, business plan of a, of, of a facility. It's got to be stuff that you're obviously interested in, but we're putting together ARDC resources so that uh, doing this stuff, which would be risky, um, complex, um, 
require several years of coordination that, that we can put the pro project framework in to support that. This was all uh, reflected in the roadmap. And so here's a nice diagram from the 2016 roadmap report where they, um, in their wisdom, the chief scientists said that this kind of thing would happen, that national clusters of increased facilities would be, you know, coming together, as you can see in the diagram here, uh, coming together somehow and then applying uh, uh, all the, the facilities to agricultural research and applications. Um, and nicely, they've got, you know, APPF, ALA, Eternai, Marseille, and NFF. So this is, this is obviously part of the, the, the spirit of the ANCRIS uh, roadmap that we're um, operating under. Now, of course, as we all know, you know uh, what is it? A picture is worth a thousand words. And in a diagram, an arrow or a, you know, a, a line is worth a thousand diagrams. So this little part here that says, yeah, this, you know, it, 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 there's a, a line coming out from national infrastructure and it all comes together in this circle and it goes off to applications. There is thousands of hours of work for us to do to actually make that happen. And so that's this, you know, if you, the spirit of these projects is to um, give us the time and effort to design how, in some cases, the uh, infrastructure could, could come together across the applications. And of course, from the NLDC perspective, we're focusing in on the data assets that, that could be done across those facilities. Um, so what do we mean by that? Well, it could be bringing together phenomic, genomic and environmental data to, you know, bringing complementary stuff to give uh, different uh, assets. Take these as just, um, what's the word, illustrative. Um, we're looking to you to uh, come to us with uh, the ideas where it makes sense for you, but this is just to get out there what the kind of things that we've heard in our uh, initial consultations around this idea. Uh, also where you might want to build up a large scale, let's say an image collection or something so that you could run new frontiers of data science over a, a, a larger pool of, of um, a larger collection. Um, or where you might want to integrate stuff that you're all collecting, but in slightly different ways and that you know, you'd want to deliver it for to a particular um, stakeholder, external stakeholder for some very impactful purpose. They're the kind of things that we're thinking uh, could be uh, facilitated by these kind of projects, but open, of course, to uh, other ways that, of bringing together increase uh, existing uh, facilities to create these cross facility data assets. So that's the um, the nub of it is that you know we will partner with the facilities. The idea is to establish these uh, cross-facility uh, national-scale data assets, and that we would support leading-edge research from that. So, getting now down to the pragmatics of what that might look like, ARDC is willing to invest up to four hundred thousand dollars in each of these projects. Uh, they could go. Uh, as uh, we would be expecting a one and one co-investment, so the projects themselves could be uh, up to 800,000. Uh, the projects could go up to two years and uh, the major um, criteria for this particular program is that you, we should be bringing together data from at least two increased facilities. This gives you an overview of that. Um, the call, we have this process here, uh, which uh, we're right in the middle of the first phase of that is uh, expressions of interest um, that will close on the 4th of May. Uh, there's a form to fill out there. We're just looking at, you know, to get an idea of what the, what your, your ideas are in, in these areas. Uh, if there are similar ideas, we may well bring people together. Uh, we want to work during the facilitation phase, which is a very generous phase, you know, from 18th of May to the 20th of July. So, you know, a two month period there for us to be able to facilitate 
in the spirit of you know previous increased facilitations where we would work with you to make sure that there is a consensus uh, between the, uh, the cluster um, and so that when we get to the request for proposal phase where we're hoping that that will not be uh, a competitive thing but that, that we will have already brought some uh, very mature consensus ideas forward. Um, projects commencing Q3 2020. Look, all this happened before in the old world of face-to-face um, you know, -face collaboration and meetings and uh, no pandemics, etc. We, as in everyone, are looking to get on with business, uh, but to adapt as well where um, some timelines, you know, where our partners uh, have other priorities happening at the moment. And so uh, we're open to adjust some of these timelines accordingly. Um, just to go back over the selection criteria that are in those documents, um, at least two increased facilities needs to bring together data from at least two increased facilities. Uh, we'd be looking to uh, the co-investment can be obtained that there are actual beneficiaries that we're not just doing bringing together data because it can be brought together there, there should be people and organizations and stakeholders that will benefit that will do research and broader uh, benefits will accrue uh, and we would look to have those beneficiaries involved as project partners um, and you know the, the nub of it is that we're establishing a, a cross-facility data asset. Uh, as far as that data asset is concerned, these are the kind of things we have in mind. That the idea is that the uh, that through this project there would be um, in a number of dimensions or a number of senses uh, bringing together data from uh, increased facilities that could some examples here, as we said before, it could be more integratable data across the facilities. Uh, it could be actually bringing together complementary types in a, in a much more accessible way or in a designed and inten uh, with intention and purpose. Um, or we could be bringing together similar data from distributed facilities. Um, we will be looking that, you know, for you to express to us how this fits into your commitment to supporting research uh, and how the what insights and efficiencies might come from that and that there is uh, a view to impact beyond research as well because the uh, the very kind of deliverable of all of this is a is a new data asset we will be looking to make sure that that data has the appropriate fair and quality standards to the uh, application that, that, that you want to put it to. Um, I think I covered this before. That's the, why we're doing this in a project format is so that we can align activity from the independent work plans uh, so that we can, you can work on areas of complexity and risk with a little bit of de-risking from the resourcing and, and participation of the ARDC and that, that we uh, it allows us to invest in some long-term standardization and coherence that is not always possible on, a, on informal or year-to-year um, -year plans. Just coming back to the last point around the impact and um, uh, other things again from the from the roadmap, uh, our infrastructure in the first instance needs to be used by research institutions and, and universities. Um, so that's the first step that the outcome of these projects is very clear that, that you know, we're building this so that it can be used for research. And we, uh, as a component of the projects, we will be uh, encouraging you to um, build the systems or the culture or the policies uh, that, that allow you to track usage, uh, research usage uh, of the infrastructure uh, so that that will be a fundable component of the of the part, uh, of the partnership. It will also be uh, a part of our um, reporting time frame and we expect to extend the reporting time frames well beyond the end of any sort of 
build project time so that we can together um, report any longer term, any lag in and longer term uptake in the research community. And then as this diagram says out to the right there, of course, that research has its own um, broader impacts. And obviously, as in Chris facilities, we want to remain in touch and help you to um, monitor any of those longer term impacts and communicate them together, you know, back to the department and others. So that it was just to underline that, that this the research outcomes and the broader impacts are, are considered to be and the planning for those inside the project um, uh, is a, an integral part of the actual project itself. I think that's all I wanted to, uh, at the end of these slides here, you've got the, the actual website with uh, all this information and there's a, that's the best um, email address to follow up with, with questions on. There's also a questions uh, box in our, um, on the website. So that's all I had to do as a, as a uh, background uh, kind of introduction. Um, the other part of today is to allow you to um, ask any questions or discuss any of the objectives or um, criteria around the program. So um, Julia, how did you want to um, manage the next part of this? We do have a couple of questions. One has, can ARDC be one of the ANCRIS partners or either two ANCRIS plus ARDC? Uh, ARDC is not counted in that minimum of two. All so right. it's ARDC plus two other ANCRIS facilities. The key thing there is that we're looking to have the data from two other facilities. Um, so you know, ARDC is not bringing our own data to the table here. So. Um, it's the cross-facility data collections that we're looking at. Thank you. Well, that leads nicely into the next question, which is how much is this about the data itself? Can it be used to build a platform to bring these types of data together? Um, this program is uh, based on the data itself it's focused on the data now of course you know between uh, the data and the access platform the management platform the analytical platform you know these are um, in one sense you know artificial uh, barriers this program is focusing on the data content itself um, so a project that only said to us, you know, we're developing, you know, the um, uh, a platform to bring stuff together. Would not would be, it that might be necessary to, you know, it's no use just having the data there without, you know, having any kind of uh, access framework or um, you know visualization, etc. Um, however, that would not be sufficient. Uh, you know, the, the idea here is to is that the the deliverable is this new you know, data asset and um, changes to the, the quality, the standards, the governance of the data uh, are the major focus of these projects. All right, thank you. Um, the next question is, would data repository infrastructure development relevant to two ANCRIS facilities but not actually combining data be eligible. But it sounds like you've just answered that question. I think I answered that in the negative, is that right? Yeah, okay. So they are the only questions that we have in the question pod. Um, if one of the organisers would like to open up for uh, unmute the participants, if anybody has verbal questions, we'd be happy to answer as well. Not at this time. Well, there is an opportunity online on the ARDC website to include questions, um, which we can answer. Um, we do have a Q&A section for the program as well. Um, so please, by all means, add any questions that you might 
think of at a later stage and we will endeavour to reply to you within one to two days, business days. Just to go over what Adrian said, the expressions of interest do close on the 4th of May. Um, we then we'll have that facilitation phase where we would like to work together with you to, on your ideas and the submissions in July. So Adrian, anything else you'd like to add before closing off? Uh, no, uh, and don't uh, hesitate to contact us if you've got uh, germs of ideas. We're very happy to be sort of active part of the um, ideas formulation process um, because we, again, this is an in, inter NCRIS program. We're really focusing in on the facilitation, collaboration and uh, consultation rather than the competitive nature of this. So don't consider us as um, sort of judges or anything like that. We're, we're really he here to try and help you to help us all to build something that could work between the facilities. Hi, Julia, Adrian, it's Graham Galloway here. Can you hear me? Hi, Graham. Hi, Graham. Yeah, so look, so I was the one asked the, asked the question about platform. I suppose I'm just wanting to investigate a bit further. If, if we're putting up a project which will include a, a couple of exemplar projects where there will be real data, but a platform that hopefully is a lot more reaches out to a much bigger audience. So we would set up a platform with some examples or some, not examples, some real data, national projects, in, but really want the project, the platform then to be available for a whole lot of other projects. Is that sort of thing going to fit within this, the context of this program? Uh, yes, I think, I think so, Graham. Uh, um, the, uh, availability of data is the key thing and uh, again if if you're setting it up in such a way that says that you know through this project these are the ones that that will become available uh, and we're setting up a you know a framework and a platform to, uh, to um, enable that to scale up you know, much more broadly in the future then I think that's actually a desirable uh, feature because what okay. we when you're bringing stuff together, um, one end of it, when it, a cottage industry thing says, oh, well, um, somebody wants to know whether um, parrots that live in this kind of forest have fluffier feathers than other parrots. Now you could just say, okay, well, let's get that one data set from these parrots and you know the environmental and the genome and phenome or whatever, you could bring together that particular um, small data set and cottage industry kind of integrate it. Uh, well, no, yes, you know, um, just, you know, uh, synthesize it if you like. Um, and so you've done, you've brought something together, uh, but from our point of view, that's not necessarily an infrastructure project. Um, you know, just bringing together something for one applied um, sort of uh, specific thing is, is at the end of cottage industry. Uh, so that probably wouldn't be as desirable. Again, at the other end of that spectrum where, uh, well, we've just got something and we think that data could be made available through it. And we think that somebody might be able to use it to integrate data between facilities would be, um, you know, not applied enough. So I think, you know, good projects will actually have a combination of a, an ongoing platform for cross increase uh, data um, integration, let's call that, uh, as well as you know real data that actually is integrated and and with particular purposes in mind um, that show that you know this is a real thing. So I think it's a very good point, uh, Graham. I would uh, I think you know a healthy project would have to have a balance of that. Um, long-term generic infrastructure feel as well as um, you know uh, real data being available and hopefully some real applications for research applications for it. Okay, so super, thanks Adrian. Yeah, does that uh, sort of align with... Yeah, no, that's excellent, that, that's super, thank you. Um, 
the next question is, must co-investment be cash or is in-kind counted as well? Uh, we have some general guidelines around that that we've already applied in that, the previous platform call there. I don't have the exact wording on on, on um, at hand here, but no, it doesn't have to be cash. You know, you know, it can be people who are applied to the project. I think we have some guidelines around, um, you know, substantial uh, components of an EFT that are applied to a project. Um, no, it does not have to be uh, cash in that sense, but it has to be real investment. All right, thank you, Adrian. Um, Organisers, are there any other hands raised for questions? Not at the moment, Julia. All right. In that case, um, thank you very much, everybody, for attending. And as previously said, there are opportunities to be in touch and we would like to discuss your ideas. Thank you all for attending. Great. Thanks for that. Bye-bye.